Okay, in this next video we're going to talk about weighted means. And weighted means can help you decide um, when, when some things are more important than others. And so in our example here we're going to talk about Julia and she wants to buy a new um, smartphone. And she decides on the following system to, to decide which parts of the cell phone are more important, different components. And so she's trying to decide should I get an Apple iPhone 7 or a Samsung Galaxy S7. And so she thinks that the battery life is most important because she's always running out her battery. So she's going to give that um, weighted 50% on her on her decision. And the price is also um, important. She's pretty price con or yeah, price conscious, so she's going to give that 30%. And then the quality slash looks, just like the overall design, she's going to say, well, that's still pretty important to me, so I'm going to give that 20%. Okay, so over here we have the iPhone versus the uh, Samsung Galaxy. And for battery life, she's going to give that a 8 out of 10 for iPhone. And she's going to give the, um, the Galaxy a 9 because she thinks that the reviews say that the battery lasts a lot longer for that one. For price, she's going to give the iPhone a 6, and um, but for price for the Galaxy is a 4. And then um, quality slash look, she's going to give it um, the Apple a 7, and she's going to give the um, Galaxy one a, a 6. Okay, so um, with weighted means, you multiply the percentages times however much you, you rated it, right? So for the iPhone, if she's going to give 50% um, of the um, of the weight to the, to the battery life, and she gave that an 8, right? Plus, and I'll put in parentheses there, um, the 0.3, right, 30% times, and she gave that a, a 6, right, for the price, and then plus, um, let's see here, uh, 0.2 for the quality, and she gave that a, um, or looks, and then she gave that a 7, right? Or in other words, um, 4 plus 1.8, plus 1.4, she's going to give the iPhone an overall rating of 7.2, considering all these different components that are weighted differently. Now with the Galaxy, she's going to give, um, again, same thing, so 50% towards the battery life, and she rated that one a little bit higher, okay? um, plus the, the price, um, and she weighted the price at 30%, um, or proportion 0.3, and she's going to times that by by four plus the 20% um, um, component that she gave to the quality slash looks and she gave that a six out of ten. Right? So we're going to have 4.5 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 and so the overall rating considering the weighted mean for the Galaxy was a 6.9 so she's going to go with the iPhone as it had a higher um, overall rating of 7.2 versus this lower rating of 6.9. That's one way you can use um, this, this whole concept of weighted mean. Okay, in the second part of the weighted mean, we're going to use weighted mean now for unequal sample sizes. And when you have a design or a study with equal sample sizes, also called a balanced design, it doesn't really matter if you get the mean of the two groups by adding up all the scores and dividing by the number of scores, or if you just average their means respectively. For example, if we have in group one here, um, let's say that we're saying the average num uh, amount of dollars that people have in their, um, in their wallet right now in this class. So you ask one person, they say, well, I have $5 and $6 and $7 and $9 and $10. So we're going to call group A like my, um, my morning class. So group A is my morning class and group B is my night class. And in my night class, I ask five people again, and they say, well, they have $8 and $9 and $12 and $7 and $14. So if I have equal sample sizes, right, because n equals 5 for both groups, group 1 and group 2, n equals 5, I can just add these all up, so 37, and then divide by 5, and I get uh, 7.4 for my first group. And in my second group, I get 50, again, divided by 5, 
I have 10. So I can just combine these two scores, these 7.4 and 10, um, and, um, or sorry, um, combine the scores, so 5 and 6 and 7 and 9 and 10, and 8 and 9 and 12 and 7 and 14, and then divide by 10 the combined 5 and 5. Okay, and um, that would give me uh, an average of 8.7 for the two classes. Now that's taking consideration that I have equal sample sizes for both groups. What happens if I have unequal sample sizes? So let's look down now at, um, at this example, right? So in group one, I have only two people. So one person has, again, we'll do um, money, right? So $5 in their pocket and $6 in their pocket, um, or $11 total. I divide that by two, and um, I get 5.5. In my, um, and we'll do AM and PM. And in my night class, I have one person who has eight dollars, nine dollars, um, twelve, seven, and fourteen dollars. So this time I have to divide by five because I have five people in this group, and I get an average of ten dollars. So what I could do is I could just add um, five point five and 10 and then divide by 2, right? So 15.5 divided by 2 gives me 7.75. And that would be my uh, unbalanced um, mean, right? Um, so let's figure out how to do a weighted mean because really this group here should not count as much as my as my second group. Right? There's there's only two people in my first group and there's five people in my second group. So let's figure out how to do a weighted mean. Follow me back over here now. Okay, so we have group one again is my AM class and group two is my PM class. Right, and same same amount. So I have one person who has five dollars, one person has six dollars. So it gives me um, eleven. Right, and then I have um, let's see here one person who has eight, nine, twelve, seven, and fourteen, so fifty dollars in my second class. And this right here is your weighted mean formula. You need to know that. So sum of x1, 11, plus sum of x2, 50, divided by 2 plus 5. All right. So if I take all of these x's, my raw scores, my 5 and my 6 and my 8 and my 9 and my 12 and my 7 and my 14, then and then I divide by 2, right, because I have n equals 2 here and n equals 5 here gives me 7 down here, I actually get 8.7 as my weighted mean. See how this mean is a lot bigger than this mean? This is my weighted mean, 8.71, because what's happening is I had more people in my PM class versus my AM class. Now, that should weigh heavier in the overall average, right? So um, my two people in my AM class um, had $5 and $6, they had $11. And they had an average of $5.5 a piece versus an average of $10 a piece for my group that it was a lot larger, so that should weigh heavier, which makes this number um, a lot bigger. So weighted mean can be used for a couple different things. In our first slide we showed weighted mean because um, she gave different priority to different parts of her cell phone. Well in this one it, we're giving different priority for the larger group. The larger group should have more of a say. If you think about this with like, um, I don't know, end of semester party, right? And I have five people in one class and two people in one class. I'm sorry, but people that have five people in their class should have more of a say than the people in the class that only has two in it. So this is a really great example of how to do weighted means for unequal sample sizes.